I really like taking pictures, but I don't always bring my camera with me. So when this is the case, I try to take as much pictures as possible with this, with my phone. Luckily, today's phones have absolutely amazing cameras and it would be a waste of skill and a waste of money to not use them correctly. So that's why in this video, I will give you or I will try to give you some tips and some settings that I found along the way to get the most out of your camera and to get beautiful pictures when you don't have your camera with you. Let's not waste any more time and get to the first tip. The first tip isn't really a tip but it's more like a personal opinion and that's using portrait mode. The reason I prefer portrait mode over the normal mode is the ability to change your aperture. For the people who don't really know what aperture is, I will not get technical on you guys, but an effect of aperture is the ability to separate your background from the foreground or better known as the subject and it creates a really nice effect but of course aperture is a lot more than just what I just said but it's an effect from aperture. So as I mentioned before in portrait mode you can change your aperture better known as the f-stop to be less or more and the lower the number the more your background will be out of focus and the more separated your foreground will be from the background. I think the ability to change your aperture gives more creative effect to your um, pictures and it also makes your pictures look more professional. Of course the normal camera mode is an also a good option and you can get really nice pictures with this one. The next tip is to turn on your grid. The grid is used to get better composition in your pictures. It's based on a rule of third and this means you will get two vertical and two horizontal lines that you can use to place your subjects. A general rule is to place your subjects or your important objects on the intersections of the lines. But you can also use the lines to place your subject on. So when you are taking a picture of a person, you can align your person on the left line or the right line as you want but as I said the grid helps you to take better compositions and this will greatly improve your pictures. The next tip is to set your focus manually. Today's phones will automatically set the focus on the foreground but the problem is that you don't always have a clear subject on the foreground. Also when you are trying to experiment with leaves before your subject for example you will have a trouble because he will focus on the leaves and you want the phone to focus on the subject. You will have to tap the screen on the subject to get your phone to focus on the subject. Also when you found your point of focus, try to hold down on the screen and it will lock the focus for you. So when you are moving it will keep focus on your subject. The next step is kind of a follow up for the previous one and it's setting your exposure manually. When you tap your screen, it not only refocuses, but it also adjusts the exposure on how it thinks it's the best. But obviously, it's not perfect, although not every time. So the solution for this is to set your exposure manually, and you do this by tapping on the screen, and there will appear a sundial, and you can drag this up or down, to adjust the brightness or better known as the exposure of the picture. So that's how you adjust your exposure to how you want it and not how the camera or your phone wants it. The next one is for the people with an iPhone 12 Pro or newer only. Sad enough, I don't have an iPhone 12 Pro or newer so I can't use this one but for the people like me who can't use this tip, Stay tuned because the next step will be a bonus tip for the people who don't own an iPhone 12 Pro. When you have an iPhone 12 Pro or newer, you have the ability to turn on Apple Pro Raw. And for people who are familiar with photography and with editing pictures, you know that a Raw format is a lot better to edit than a JPEG or any other compressed file. So that's where Apple Pro Raw comes in really handy because you can take your pictures and you get a lot more details so you can edit the picture a lot better. Keep in mind that these file sizes can get pretty big so only use Apple Pro Raw when you are planning on editing the picture. Otherwise you are just wasting a lot but I really mean a lot of storage on your phone. Alright so now the bonus tip. For the people who don't have an iPhone 12 or newer like me um, you can still shoot in RAW, but you will have to download another app. The app that I'm talking about is called Lightroom and 
If you are familiar with photography or editing pictures, you will obviously know what Lightroom is. And you can use the mobile app to take pictures. So for this one, I'm quickly gonna jump onto my phone and show you guys how to access the Lightroom mobile camera and some things I would change. So first up, we want to go into the Lightroom mobile app, of course, and we want to click on the camera icon. Once we've opened the Lightroom camera, we want to change the file format. By default it will be JPEG, but we want to toggle it to DNG because DNG is a format used for RAW. Next thing we want to do is where um, mine is standing on professional now, but you want to change it from automatic to professional or high dynamic range. HDR or high dynamic range is an even more powerful tool to um, get the most out of your pictures but if you want to i will i can make a video about it but i would highly recommend you to use hdr but for this video i will stay in the professional tab so you choose professional and you will see all the options that you have with a professional camera uh, like shutter speed and exposure and iso and white balance so this is really useful for getting the most out of your pictures and getting the most control out of your phone camera. Alright, so these were a few tips to get the most out of your phone for taking pictures on the go. Know that these devices are very capable of a lot nowadays and you don't really need to have an expensive camera to start taking pictures. Let me know in the comments if you guys got any more tips on taking pictures with your phone. But thanks for watching, I really appreciate you being here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.